Guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Buddy Guru channel. Today, I'm going to be doing a deck profile on the Mobile Aerial Team deck from the brand new booster set SS01A Buddy Ragnarok. So, as we all know it, Buddy Ragnarok is the final Buddy Fight set that is going to be released. And it's really sad for me because I have made so many memories through this game. And I've been playing this game since Buddy Fight 100, so I've been here for a long time. And even though... Um, this may be the end of Buddy Fight. There are still many positives we can take from this booster set. Like for example, the revival of many many strong decks. So, the MAT deck used to be very potent in the meta previously because of the FTK engine. But as decks became more and more aggressive and as this deck got less and less support, this deck eventually fell off the table and I'm glad that now, in the final booster set, one of my favourite decks, the mobile aerial teams, have gotten support in order to make it a really really strong deck as of now because now not only do they uh, have the FTK engine they are also able to survive which is was something MAT lacked back when we everybody played uh, when we all played the MAT so with that let's get on with the deck profile so let's start off with the monsters first monster is the most crucial card in the deck three copies of Sakanagi Kaname so, Sakanagi Kaname is the new size 3 where it has weaponry link, which is the condition to put the items, the weaponries, into the soul. So, that is the condition, the weaponry link effect. The second effect is when he's ridden, when she is ridden, you can search your deck for weaponry. And because we play so many weaponries, this card is super powerful to give you consistency because you can search for anything you need. You need the sword. Or you want to shoot effect damage, you got a gun, you want defense, you got a shield, or sorry, you got a shield, or you want to push for a game, you got this item. So, now with the with this card, everything, all the weaponries become instantly accessible, and it can really help you with, your, with the FTK engine, because of the consistency one card provides. So, we must, we play only three of her, because she is searchable with a spell, and... She is not as important as in the past because now with the FTK engine, we do not actually want to sit on her. We want to sit on the next card, our buddy from the brand new booster set. Two copies we run of Haruka and Fubuki. So this card is extremely strong. When she has three or less souls, she gets weaponry link, which is a um, upgrade, a step up from the two or less in the previous card. And not only that, she has a passive effect. Each soul in her, uh, when for each soul in her, she gets plus 3k. So if you have like, here we have uh, 4 souls. 4 souls in her, she gets an additional 12k defense. And if you put in cards like the, sh uh, the shield, which we'll go on to later, the shield, she gets an uh, even more increased buff of defense. She also gains power. And this is not only to her, it gives all MAT on the board as well. The stats... Her counter ability is she can immediately search for a MAT, a weaponry from your deck into your hand or into the soul. Which means if you come take it from the deck, it really helps you set up your FTK because usually you already have two mad eyes because of the Sakanagi and the spell. So you already have two. But her effect during battle phase, you can search out one more and then just suck it in where you get six crit and just whack for six so that you can draw more and deal more. So her effect is really strong. She also has a triple attack inbuilt into her, which was something that, uh, which is something that really gives this deck a very good uh, potential when going second. Because in the past we only had a double attack, we have to rely on the pay to gauge impact to restand and attack again, but not anymore because now that she has triple attack, she is much more lethal and and her attacks are much stronger than in the past. So we play only two of her because she is searchable as well through a certain spell that I believe almost every single deck right now in the meta is playing. And she also has, oh yeah, she also has this ability called Purge, which means she can once per turn, per unit. So for example, if I have these two, I can Purge with her once. So I put a weaponry from the soul into the gauge, and with her, I can do it once as well. So it's not a name skill, but it is a once per turn skill for each individual unit. So two copies of Haruka, our buddy. Um, next up. The last MATs we run in the deck, uh, no, sorry, 
second last three runner colette so runner colette is a very interesting card it replaced the russian girl that we used to play back in the first uh booster set of m80 because now the russian girl was an odd place effect where she can put one her ability is a counter even though you have to pay a gauge her perch uh, basically bypasses that because she has perch inbuilt all the m80s have perch inbuilt her inbuilt to them so Basically, she's just a pay one gauge, suck a weaponry into the soul. So it elevates Chris consistency because you can increase defense with her. You can go for the FTK if you suck in this. Or you could go for you could get a defense buff if you manage to suck in this. Or if you want to go for aggro, you can suck in the restander. So she's a really really strong card and it's a must play in the deck. We don't play four because we only need one on the field to a uh most of in most scenarios so we will play run only three because of all the draw power in the deck it's almost guaranteed you'll see at least one in the game in your hand so three copies of her next up the final mat yes this is the final mat play one copy of mano yukari uh basically a dragonic charge so her ability this is how people use it for mano yukari weapon link from the deck into the soul uh, let me put it over here then you perch you ride it, put one more into the soul, and then you perch again. So basically, it's a dragonic charge. Uh, she is a free dragonic charge, but not only is she a dragonic charge, she is also a right fodder for this guy. So essentially, she uh, if you break and somehow your opponent destroys your Sakanagi, and you have Mano Yukari, it's very uh, you're very safe that you can go into another Haru uh, Haruka. And Fubuki, which allows you to continue setting up your combos and allow you to push in for even more damage to your opponent and seal the game. So she's only a one-off because we don't need to see her in games much. Actually, we can not see her in games at all. But in many scenarios, she's really, really good when she just enters your hand and can be very useful in a lot of situations. It's just that she's not as important as the other cards in the deck, so we only run one of her. Next up, a new card we actually got, not from this set, but in a Time Dragon Booster set. Two copies of Time Soldier Speaker. So this is basically a Dara Barak. It helps with consistency, and it helps with your FTK engine to help you draw into your pieces. So you just run two of him because he's once per turn, and we don't need to see more than one of him per game. So two is more than enough. So yep, two copies of the Dara Barak. And this card, ooh, this promo is super strong. Two copies of React Moon. Her first ability ability is what we really want it for. So let's go through the horrible abilities first. Put a card okay, not horrible. A worse abilities first. Less good abilities. Put a card from your bottom's uh drops onto the bottom of deck. It can be good in many scenarios, like for example, Time Dragon, let's say this is a uh, Tubocus, you could just send it bottom and they can't do anything. Or against Alti Gaga. Just send the million power or send the triple attack to the bottom and their G Evo will be gone. So it is really strong still. It's just that we don't really play it for that. We can play it for that. It can be very useful. It is very useful. It is very good. It's just that we essentially this card, the main purpose is for the third ability, which is five or more damage is reduced to zero. Because now you have so big defense. Let's say we go into her. You have, like, let's, not even kidding, usually you have, like, this many items in the soul. By turn 3 or 2, this many items. You basically have about, like, 20k, 20 to 30k defense already. When people are forced to link into you, this card helps you stop it. Because usually when you link, you go above 5 damage. So this card basically uh, prevents all the damage from, uh, prevents you from taking all the damage that they are dealing. Which is why we play 2 of her. Uh, it's also really really good in the FTK matchup against Alti Gaga. You drop this, they can't do anything to stop you. Against this, against the mirror, you drop this. If they are on a, let's say they're on a Haruka, they attack you. You drop this, they can't even spell now it because it's a monster. So that's why we run two of her. She is not the most important card in the deck, but she is a very very powerful card that we I think all decks should have to run right now because of the sheer. Survival. Viability this card offers on her own and her cost is free as well. 
So two copies of React Moon. So let's go on to the items because in this deck, items are very important and we do play many many items. So first off, four copies of the possibly the strongest item, Mad Eye. Basically, in a sort of a web MAT, you gain a crit, penetrate, and three K power. And her counter ability, his count, uh, its counter ability is put it into the sort of a MAT, draw a card, if it has weaponry link. So four of Mad Eye, and it's also a core engine of the FTK because it increases crit, obviously. So usually you just need two of him and the Haruka, and then you can act, go into FTK and win. Uh, but we play four because it's a free draw one. Who doesn't want it? Next up, also to help the FTK, Shooting Star. So, this card, I would play, eventually, if, at first I thought playing 2 would be fine. But then when you realise how much this card can do for the FTK, when there are cards like React Moon running around, how much this card can do to help you with the FTK. So, essentially putting 2 of her, in shooting 2 damage, and staying on this Sakanagi, Helps you bypass the React Moon because instead of putting three swords, you have two. You shoot twice. You shoot twice. You attack for four. Your opponent will be left with four, and then you just impact for another four. So basically, you're bypassing the React Moon in with this uh combo. However, if you really want to, uh, you could always sort one out for a shield. A shield can is also the shield is also really strong, which is the next card we're gonna be going onto. Three copies of the shield. The shield is basically there because she gives you 3k defense and a 1 crit reduction to your opponent's entire board. Counter, just put it in the soul of uh, MAT during your opponent's turn instead and draw a card. This is during your own turn. This is during your opponent's turn. Um, if you want, you could bump this up to 4 because it is really, really powerful. It's just that I play 3 only now because we run many other defense spells for example we run grace in this deck as well so i feel that three is good for now but if you want to bump up more to four that's up to you and of course the last item we play two copies of the new item Hyun. so Hyun is really powerful first he prevents soul drop which is something a big weakness a glaring weakness of the MAT deck drop all the souls and we are dead but this card prevents that which is great Counter, pay a life and restand a card. Oh, that's the really powerful. Restand the card, the MAT that is in the soul off. So basically, I have Sakanagi. Pay one life, restand the Sakanagi after attacking. So that is a very powerful skill because in the past, in order to restand a card on the field for MAT, we have to pay two gauge, I think, or three gauge for the impact. However, now for a life, you could do a impact light and this helps you clear up more space in your deck for other important cards. Some, and it, it's also a monster destruction because it, of his com second counter ability. Suck in the resource of MAT and destroy a monster. So it's also a the only destruction we have in the deck. And we run two of him only because we don't need three. There's no scenario where we need to pay three life to restand three times and attack because we have the impact to seal the game. Um, there may be seen okay, there may be scenarios, but it rarely happens. So two is usually because we only usually go into one because opponents usually survive the MAT um all the MAT humongous attacks early on before you even get to use this. So we only play two because you really only need one if and see and most of the time you just play it for the first the passive ability ways your soul cannot be dropped. So yep, that's it for the items of the deck. Let me just Clear this up. Let's go on to the spells. Four copies of possibly the most important card in the deck. Infonet Operation. The most important spell of the deck. So, why is this card so good? Essentially, if you don't have this card, this is what you'll be doing. You'll be having a Sakanagi, but we, only, we have to play four instead because this card boosts consistency. It's a free plus two because Sakanagi and... Sakanagi gives a mad eye, and the spell gives a mad eye. So you're drawing two, and you're wasting zero hand cards like this. So it's a plus two cards to your hand for a gauge, for three gauge and a life. But that's not really bad because you get a free four crit item and a fodder for your buddy. Not only are that, 
this card also helps you run the engine for the FTK because of the consistency this card gives. There is so much value in this card in this deck because this card gives you two very important set pieces right off the bat for a gauge and a life for the FAK to happen. So we have to run four of this because we want to see it in our opening hand or we want to be able to draw into it no matter what happens. So we play four in for the operation. It's a definitely must four. Definitely have to play four. No choice. Next up, some draw spells, some consistency to boost consistency. Two man team, two copies of two man team. Draw two. If uh draw a card, if you have a, if you have an MAT on the field, you can only cast this, then you draw a card. If the MAT has one or more souls, draw two instead. So just there for consistency. It's really powerful as well because a draw two for free, no cost. And it's really a simple condition to fulfill, but we only play two because usually we are going for the FTK in this deck and we don't need to see we don't need to play four because we only need to see one in the first turn. There's no point in seeing two. So we only play two of this. So two man team. Two two man team. We play two copies of Life as an aircraft mechanic. So this card is really interesting. In the past, I took this out of the MAT deck because I felt that there was not enough value this card could give if you were playing the previous MAT because we ran uh because in the past we played the charge and draw so I only played one but now I bumped it up to two because paying a gauge and taking two is very important in this deck for one reason it is very good consistency because we only play two buddies if both go in the drop zone. You're almost dead. But because you have this, it's basically setting up a fourth copy of these two cards. Um, most of the time, you just want these two cards. If you already have it, great. You can go get into more drawing capabilities because your mad eyes give you free cards uh, through their abilities. And also, you really want, if you don't have it already, this card can search for this, which is also a really uh, powerful piece in order to drag the game if you ever fail your FTK. So it's a really good, it can help you with many uh, many different ways and it can be a very good defensive, uh, it can turn into a very good defensive option if you fail your FTK. So we play two because we only need to see one in a game. Uh, we don't even need to see it in a game, but it is, can, it is very useful in situations that require it. So two copies of Life as an Aircraft Mechanic. Next up, two copies of It's a Mission Briefing. So this is basically a superhero time light. But the check top 3, you charge 1, you add 1 to your hand, and then 1 goes into the soul. So the reason this card, we play it because obviously weaponries go into the soul, but also because we play this. So you this card, we want it to be in the soul of a buddy. So through this, we put it in the soul of a buddy, and the buddy also gives a 3k defense boost and a power boost for each card in the soul. So this card is basically for free, giving you an additional uh, 3k defense buff. So... Because it's free and because it's so good for consistency, we play two, but we don't really need to see both in a game. We just need to see one. That's why we play two copies. It's also the same as all the other consistency cards. It's just to boost consistency in the deck. And it can help in the FTK engine if you are lucky enough to put a mad eye into the soul of a of your right. But if you're that lucky, well, okay. Do you deserve it? Um so we just play two copies of it's a mission briefing. Next up, a very, very, very powerful spell. One of the best spells in Hero World. Three copies of It's Superhero Time. So this is one of the best consistency cards in the Hero World. Uh, because for life, you check the top three, two go into the gauge, and two go in, and one goes into your hand. So this is actually really powerful. Let me show you why. Two gauge is really helpful because when I realized that let's say okay we play this card future card body fight so let's say you use body fight body fight you search for the sakanagi hey sorry the haruka haruka you go to the haruka you pay the two gauge from the body fight let's say you use the sakanagi already that means you'll be left with zero gauge so this superhero time basically ensures you are able to get all the gauge you need to go into the FTK combo. And because it is also it also gives you a free plus one, it uh lose you lose no advantage while doing the 
free 2 gauge and we're getting the 2 free 2 gauge for the combo because many of these cards all require 2 gauge like the impact also just requires 2 and so we play 3 of it because it's much more important than other consistency cards because this card actually helps with the engine for the FTK because it uh, really uh, it gives you the 2 gauge which is really important which where I been play testing this deck I felt that it, I saw that it was really important that you get the 2 gauge from the superhero time so we play 3 of him instead of the 2 like the other cards because the 2 gauge really can make a difference in your in getting to the FTK and failing the FTK um, next up you could come this uh, it's an offensive and a defensive card 2 copies of the spell now also the dream I had went basically Pay 2 gauge, nullify the spell. It's really good when you're like going aggressive. Like if your opponent uses a spell against you during FTK, you can just spell now. Or if you are trying to if you fail the FTK and you want to try to hold off your opponent, you could just spell now any important spells. Like for EDD, the discard one, just spell now. Time Dragon, the track top tree, just spell now. This card can really help you sur uh, survive much longer against the aggressive meta that exists right now. So we play two of the also the dream I had when because we don't really need to see it now in the F while doing the FTK we don't have to have it in hand because there are cards like React Moon that we just cannot stop or cards like Grace countered to the impact which we just cannot stop so we just play two of the spell now and also because it's a really cost heavy card two gauge which eats up a lot of gauge and fights for a lot of gauge with the an impact and the buddy so we just play two of her she is good when you see. It is really good when you see it, but it is not as important as all the other cards. Next up, two of a generic card, Grace of the Sun Deity. So, the reason we play this is, there's number one reason we play this because of the FTK. Um, second reason, we don't use it as much, but the for this turn, you cannot take damage. It's really powerful because, okay, we have move in this deck. So, this has move, the Mano Yukari has move, the... This card also has move. The Sakanagi also has move. So when everything moves to the center, uh, you can still eat damage for penetrate when they link through. You just pop a grace. Mm, that's it. You can survive. Basically survive the turn. So we play two copies of the grace only because uh, we also have two copies of React Moon to go together with the grace. And the grace is mainly there just for the survival of the FTK. So two copies of grace. Now on to the best or one of the best spells in Buddy Fight right now. The spell name after the game itself, Future Card Buddy Fight. So this card came out in the new set Buddy Revival and the prices have been skyrocketing really fast because of the power this card brings. So basically, let's put it here. You cast this, you put it inside here. First you search for either your search for your buddy. And then you charge to gauge for at the start of your attack phase, the buddy plus gets a additional two crit buff or counter. If either you or your opponent have five life or less, you can cast this to search for the impact. You put it into the soul and charge to gauge. This is so strong for this deck because that's what this deck is about: running the impact, the brave energy, full drives. This card is basically a searcher for this. Or it's a searcher for this, which both in turn help with the FTK engine. And the two free gauge are also perfect just to give you a free copy of the Haruka and a free impact if you go for either one. So we play two of the future card buddy fight. I would play four if it wasn't once per fight, but it cannot be one not once per fight. It's so strong. Um, it's uh, We only play two because it is once per fight. We only need to see one a game. So play two. It's not... Um, it's really really powerful and you want to try to get it if you don't get it you can still go uh, for the FTK without it but because this card is really powerful we play two and most of the time you will be able to draw into it because of all the draw spells we play in this deck so two copies of future card buddy fight really really powerful and a must have in many decks right now the last spells in the deck we play are four generics Future Palette, also from the brand new set. This card is very interesting. So, previously I wasn't playing 4, I was playing 2, and 2 body option. But then, after playtesting a while, I realised that not many decks can nullify items. And when they do, 
nullify the items. I realized many of the items in my deck don't actually need nullifying because all the effects, all the stats that this card gets is actually through the items. So instead, I opted for playing Future Palette because Future Palette prevents rest, prevents, uh, prevents, it's basically a DOD and prevents rest, cannot leave the field. Um, and together with the soul, cannot so it cannot drop soul item. This card is guaranteed and it's a plus 8k inside of her. So it's a very, very powerful card. It gives a free draw. It's a counter as well. It gives soul guard everything. It's everything you need for defense. And it's one of the reasons why we play very few defense. We only play seven uh, ordinary defense because of this card. It boosts the defense up. Uh, but with her, it's, uh, with just this card, it gives you 14k defense uh, base already. So this card is really, really powerful for that reason. And most of the time, you don't really want to see body option anyway while playing this deck. You want to see the future palette because the future palette gives you so much advantage um, for offensive capability, defensive capability, and it can also help consistency in a way because you get to draw a free card. So four copies of future palette. And the last card we play is two copies of Brave Energy Full Drive. So Brave Energy Full Drive, no explanation needed. FTK, pay two gauge, deal two, and then deal one for each card in a soul. So with that, I'm gonna just I'm gonna show you some combos right now to that of the FTK of how the FTK works to give you a better idea of the FTK. So let's get on right to it. So let's say we have a few like this. This is a mad eye, two gauge. Uh, we already cast a superior time and an infinite, and this is around the hand size you'll be having. Um, okay, we let's just use a spiga. Okay, let's say we take a two man team. Oh, we could also take a mad eye for consistency because right now in our hand, we don't have anything much to help with that. But honestly, because this card is already a five crit, we can just drop the mad eye, and we take the two man team. Draw two. Aha, future palette. Okay, we check top three first. Okay, so since we, oh, so in this scenario, because we are going first, uh, and we have already a shield and a future pallet. Most of the time, you just ditch the rest of the spells, and I will ditch the grace of the sanity because I don't really want. Uh, I don't really want it in the soul with this board. So okay, oh sorry, the Haruka and Fubuki needs to have a size three in the soul because you need to write a size write it on top of a size three. So like this. So let's look at our hand. Right now, all we could do is just shoot one. So let's just shoot one and perch. So we go in the battle phase. We use the skill. Let's take a another mad eye because we don't really need the shield right now. Mad eye. So let's equip the mad eye in because there's three souls. We can still equip it. We draw a card. Okay. So let's attack. And okay, let's say our opponent has a spell. We have a spell now right now. So we could just spell now. So that is just simple. Okay. But this is where the body fight comes in handy. So because here I have six crits from the three mad eyes. One, two, three. I'll just cast the body fight. So the body fight skill. Because my opponent has four life. If I... If my opponent didn't stop it, I can just search for the F impact. Crush to gauge, and then just cast the impact straight away. And then this card goes straight underneath the body. So the impacts will deal 2 damage plus another 4, so it's 6 damage to their 4 life. Or, let's say he survived the impact, and or he didn't use the spell just now. We had the, also the dream I had went. In our hand, let's put the two gauge back. So with this hand right now, we all we could do is just play defensive. So he passes his turn. Let's say start of his turn, we perch, and then we go into the Asanagi. Then we could always go into Pallet. Then okay, he casts a spell. Spell now. Then battle phase. We move the speaker, and then we have. A grace to survive, and then we could search for another mad eye. And there you go, just like that, we survived the turn. Most of the time, we'll survive like that, unless you're fighting a deck like Levatin, where the attacks do uh, way more damage, then maybe you wouldn't survive the turn. But in most cases, you would survive the turn. So that is really a mini 
uh, demonstration of how the combo works. Of course, there are more combos to this deck. It's just that's just the two basic ways of playing a defensive and offensive turn in the MAT deck. And with that, that comes to we come to the end of the MAT deck profile. Be sure to like and subscribe and comment down below. Maybe what deck you would like to see next, or what type of videos you would like to see next. Because I know I've been out for already 10 months or 11 months now. And now that I've finished my exams, I guess I have nothing much to do. So I'm just trying this back. I'm trying to upload videos again for fun. So be sure to like what I've said. Comment and subscribe down below. What you would like to see next, comment down below. What you would like to see next, subscribe, like the video. And we'll see you guys next time.